How about praise report? Anything good happen to anybody this week? Well, praise report is certainly due for Dr. Greg. Yes, Dr. Greg, yes. And I'm here. Yeah, amen, thank you. <laughs> We're glad to have you here this morning. Give me another day. Um, uh, I got one that, you know, we're uh, Friday, we got, I got the email that said I wouldn't have a drop off. On Monday morning, I would have just a pickup. And the pickup's at 2.30, and it's like, Good Lord, you know, it's three hours away. But at the same time, I'm going, well, I have to get up in the middle of the night and go to work, so that's good. And then with the thing going on with Paige's mother and all, that gives me the time to be here in the morning to do Paige's chores <coughs> with his little critters over here so that she doesn't have to worry about that. And so, yeah, it's kind of, to me, that's, that's a blessing, you know? It really, uh... Really opens that up. That's, that's exciting. I think it's a blessing that that Kristen and uh, la night before last was able to stay over there with my mom and stepdad, and then last night his nurse insisted on staying. So Kristen had help and he was able to get some rest because uh, he hadn't. You know they were in the ER till five thirty in the morning, so um, they didn't get any sleep night before last. But anyway. Um, <coughs> So it's a, a praise report that, you know, God sends people. I mean, like, you know, to to encourage and to help and stuff. I have a praise report about the weather. I mean, I know it's getting cold now, but this 80-degree weather that we have for a couple of days, well, sure, not. I'm sorry, Abby. <laughs> I know you don't want the hot. I loved it. I loved it. I've got all kind of stuff growing, and I had plants sitting on the back porch for three days that I didn't have to lug in and out. Take them out at night and the, during the day and bring them in in the morning. So they got, it was warm enough at night. They stayed out. I didn't, it was a little less work. So, but I got all kind of stuff growing. I'm having fun with anybody else. <coughs> I had um, a lot of really good calls that I made for um, my business. And I actually prayed a few days ago when I, like, I was supposed to make them a few days ago, but then I didn't. And anyway, I prayed before I went to do it that people would just not answer their phone if they were going to be mean to me because I didn't <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. And then I was making <coughs> phone calls and texting Brandon at the same time, and I made a bunch, and there was like over like half of them went straight to voicemail, and I was getting kind of annoyed because I was like, I'm leaving all these voicemails. And then I thought about it later and was like, well, if they were going to be mean, I didn't want to answer the phone. Amen, amen. Um, you have not because you asked not. You asked, and so, you know. Did you have some good reports from that stuff, that those um, calls too? Yeah, I did have a lot of really nice, like, people. I only had one person who was, like, at all difficult, and that was fine. It was just the one. That, see, this could have gone to voicemail. That's when I remember. <laughs> <laughs> that, was Listen, that one could have went to voicemail. Yeah, throw that me down, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Listen, <coughs> Good morning, good morning. We are we are giving praise reports. Do y'all have any praise reports? Y'all made it. That's a good praise report. That's very good. Anybody else? Okay, okay. All right, Jason, I'm going to get you to pray. Yeah. Okay. All right, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for all you do. I thank you for being who you are. I thank you for. I thank you for salvation, Lord. I thank you for Jesus, God. Um, everybody has family, Father. Everybody has friends that they we're just not sure of, Lord. I pray, God, that they, the ones that we're not sure if they are saved, God, that they would come to know you. They would come to know you before they die, before they step out of this world, God, into eternity. So that's really all that matters. That's uh, nothing else matters in this world except for that. Do we do we know Jesus? And Father, I thank you for the the gift of uh, that we will receive of resurrection, God. I thank you for just your amazing grace, God. I thank you for just just pulling us out of the situation that we pulled us, yeah, you know, that that we were in. 
and God for uh, all of our prayer requests. God, we just lift them up, Father, that uh, that you could you could get in there and, and somehow, some way, no matter what the situation is, that the focus would become more on you. And Father, we love you. We thank you for what you're going to do. We pray for um, pray for our, our community, God. We pray for those around us that are sick and hurting, God. Those that need uh, spiritual help, Father, that maybe we could shed light to them, God. That we could show the power of Jesus and the 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 and His might, God, and and the authority that He that He allows us to all walk in, Father. It's such an amazing thing. But God, we love you. We thank you for everything you do, God. Thank you for faith. Thank you for being our God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <clears throat> no, I just click like them on the wave. Um, I got one thing before you get started. I have something to do. So stand up for me. All right, does everybody in here know who my oh. wife is? Does yes. everybody know who my wife is? <laughs> We uh, we match. Uh, okay. So I'm not gonna I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. He pulled he pulled out the shirts and I glance at mine and my eyes are drawn to this color and then I'm like, oh, that's funny. He's got that color on. I thought, hey, I got some tan pants. Let's really make get matched today. So I kind of did a little bit, you know, a little uh, bit. A little bit. <laughs> Who, who's got the burgundy vehicle? <clears throat> It just pulled up. Yeah, I, I was Probably trying to think what it was. Too. I don't. We do have a couple of new people that will be coming today. <clears throat> okay, so am I all right sitting down for the camera? Okay, so unanswered prayer. We're gonna. This is gonna be a two part because we're gonna dive into some of the the reasons um, <clears throat> uh, why our prayers don't get answered. Um, has anybody ever had a prayer that didn't get answered? <laughs> Hmm. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Ten years I waited on that truck. <laughs> Ten years you waited on the truck. Um, so why do prayers not get answered? Is it that God is teaching us to wait? Are we not correctly hearing the voice of God? Is God trying to deal with something in our lives? Um, and it could be any of those or multiple of those things. Um, of this we can be certain. And this comes from 1 John 5, 14-15. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So if it's according to his will, you can ask for stuff. And if it's not his will, it's not his will. Uh, it's not going to. Uh, no, you're fine. First John 5, 14 through 15. And if. We know he hears us. Whatever we ask, we know that we will have what we ask of him. When we pray in alignment with the will of God, we know that he hears us and that his will cannot be thwarted, which is amazing. Um, <clears throat> you know, um, if we're not getting the answers that we want, um, why are we not? I mean, the Bible says, good morning, good morning. Good morning. The Bible says, <clears throat> uh, you have not because you ask not. So ask. You know, a, you know. we need to make sure that we're in his will, where we're praying his will. Um, I go back to, and I, I think I use this example a lot because I, 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 it, it speaks to me a lot. But in the Bible, when Jesus went to the garden before the crucifixion, before they came and got him, he prayed, God, let this cup pass before me. But nonetheless, not my will, but your will. And so as we're praying, it's really important that, God, what is your will? You know, this is what I want. You have not because you ask not. You ask, but then you end it with, God, I want your will when it's all said and done. So, you know, just about a prayer request I had for my, my family member that's sick. Um, <clears throat> you know, if it's not God's will for healing to take place, then healing's not going to take place. Um, you know, um, and if it is his will for healing to take place, it will take place. Um, that's why I speak praying in tongues is, you know, sometimes I, I will say for that situation, I don't know how to pray. I, for some reason, I just, other stuff don't have any problems, but this is a situation I just don't know how to, I just pray in tongues. God, I don't know what I need to be praying. I don't know if I need to be praying for spiritual stuff 
if I need to be praying for physical stuff, I, you know, praying for the sick person or for the spouse or for the, I mean, I'm not sure. So I just pray in tongues. God, you know, the Holy Spirit that's in me knows what needs to be prayed for the situation. So, yes. Yeah, stop me in the sentence. Uh, one thing I did want to say was when we pray, <laughs> and you pray this fervent, you know, oh God, I need this or whatever it is we're praying for. Remember when you pray for, but God, your will be done. That should be more fervent than that than what you're actually asking for. You know what I mean? I think we I think we gloss over that so often that we go, oh Lord, and this and this and this and God, you know this and this and this. If it's your will, <clears throat> right? You throw it in there right, as like the placate. Lord. Yeah, because we know we're supposed to. But if we, if that's you know what the what we're truly truly praying, then. It'll, uh, if that's our, our heart there. That's why I say I don't know how to pray. And I, I've got a, a family member that's very sick. <clears throat> um, well, it's my mom. Um, but uh, that's why when I say I don't know how to pray, it's not, I guess, truly that I don't know how to pray, but I don't want me to be in it, you know? Um, because we want, you know, when we love somebody, we want them healed, you know? Right. Um, but their eternity is more important than their physical being here. And so I just, you know, God, I need you to pray for them. Um, okay, so, um, but what about when our prayers, even prayers for the things that would bring God tremendous glory seems to go unanswered? First, we have to remember that no is an answer. God will tell you no. Um, sometimes we don't want to hear it. Sometimes we pretend that, you know, it wasn't a no. Um, we, we just, we don't want to hear it. Um, God will sometimes choose not to allow something that would bring him glory. I mean, like you think about healing, healing somebody will bring him glory. But, um, <clears throat> it says sometimes he chooses not to allow something that would bring him glory in order that something else might bring him greater glory. So, um, I think about when 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 people are sick, you know, and you pray for someone. Um, <clears throat> you know, I don't I don't want anybody, and I, I don't believe, you know, the Bible says God doesn't want any to be separated from Him for eternity. Um, but at the same time, the thought that crosses my mind: one person dying and going to hell, if that's what it takes to get a multitude of other people saved to spend eternity. I mean, it. You know, God's will is perfect. He, I mean, his ways are higher than our ways. And um, doesn't mean it's easy. Doesn't mean it's not going to hurt. But, um, okay. So, still, what about those prayers that seem to receive no answer? You ever had, you've been praying, you just like feel like your prayers just don't even get past the ceiling. I mean, I think everybody has experienced that. And if you hadn't, well, good for you. I have. I have. I have. Like to know what you do. Spirit <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so the Bible uh, tells us that there's several reasons why our prayers might not make it past the ceiling. And these are, we're going to talk about four examples, and I have a sneaky feeling we're just going to get into two of them, and then we'll do the other two next um Sunday. So it's not that necessarily that these are the only reasons your prayers aren't getting answered, but this is just four examples. So, um, and, and I will list them and then we'll dive into each of them. But the four are problems with your marriage, which I found very interesting to be like one of the top listed ones. But, um, uh, you know, uh, if you're not married, you may be married one day. Um, if you never get married, that's okay. Um, this is still good good advice. Um, so problems with your marriage, an unforgiving heart. We all know that unforgiveness, the Bible's very, I mean, like most of us can spit that out. You know, how can you expect God to forgive you if you don't forgive your brother? You know, in, your brother in Christ, not your physical brother, because <coughs> um, habitual disobedience to God. Uh, you keep you keep doing doing wrong. You're sinning and, you, you know, you're not you're not turning from it and the need to confess and repent of a particular sin. And the, that fourth one is also worded. Um, let's see. Say that one again. Uh, the need to confess. The reason God doesn't hear our prayers is there's a need to confess and repent of a particular sin. Um, so, um, and I actually have it worded cherished sin which I wish I had put it on that front that way because that, that, that kind of hits, I think, to me. 
Okay, so we're going to dive into God not hearing our prayers because of um, problems in your marriage. In the Garden of Eden, God gave the man an incredible gift, a wife. She was the one who fit him perfectly, custom designed by God to be his ultimate partner in life. But marriage is not automatic. It must be maintained. Husbands and wives must live out their callings as God intends. Otherwise, things get off balance, and it's not only the marriage relationship that suffers. It's a delicate ba balance in a Christian marriage, like a chemical formula. Husbands are to love their wives sacrificially, and wives to submit to their husbands' loving sacrifice willingly. And these two ingredients, these two ingredients are not, if they're not balanced, the marriage relationship gets out of whack. And sometimes a mistake in the formula can burn the whole chemistry set. Peter counsels husbands to guard this delicate balance, uh, according to 1 Peter 3, 7, so that nothing will hinder your prayer. Your prayers, I'm sorry, that's plural. Um, so, um, 1 Peter 3, 7. Um, that's, you know, so so if something, you know, with your prayer life with God, if something doesn't see, you know, check your, check your, um, Check your marriage relationship. It is not only yes, ma'am. Jump Sorry. in any time. That because <clears throat> is um is that applied to a living relationship? Is I, I know in God's eyes it's not considered marriage, but you're looking at it a marriage if you're in that perspective matter. So you mean dating? No, because living, living together. together. Mm -hmm. um, if God's not, if you're not, your prayers aren't getting past the ceiling and you're living together and you're not married, you're living in sin and that's the cherished sin that's the number four that we'll talk about. Oh, okay, okay. So Sorry. if, if no, no, that's, that's a good... Opposite sex living together? Just <coughs> yes. Like, okay. I just want to clarify. <laughs> okay. Well, I was going to say, that's another whole discussion <laughs> yeah, we talk about. Same sex living together. Living together. It's also, is this, is, is like, uh, there's attraction there or is it the, just... A mutual feeling of needing somebody to be there. Oh, so you're not talking about like a, a friendship, kind of. are you talking about a friendship or are you talking about a, a couple? Well, I, I don't know. I, I don't know them well enough to know. Okay. So um, I was in the perspective matter thinking that marriage was the next process because they, they moved in together, but I'm not so sure that that's on the well, uh, and that's another whole thing. That's an, that's another whole thing. But if you're living together, mm -hmm. even if your intentions are to get married, even if you're engaged and you're living together, right. the Bible says do not even have the appearance of sin. So even if okay. he's got his room and she's got her room, um, first of all, you're opening yourself up to a whole lot of temptation that, that you know, um, it is perceived that, you know, you can tell people that you're not sleeping together, that, you know, you're, you're not sinning, you're doing right. But uh, that's not what the perception is. You know, because everybody else sees that you're, you're living together. That person, so you can't be following God. You know, and, and you or know, and it it is right. about us, and it is about our relationship with God, and we're the ones. That, you know, it's it's our our heart. He knows our heart, not other people. Right. But the Bible, I mean, like correct me if I'm wrong. It says, you know, to abstain from the appearance of sin. So, um, the Bible is very specific about you know um, fornicating, you know, sex outside of marriage. So if if we're if we're partaking in that, you're sinning. What if that is not even in the picture? If there, you talking hypothetically. about hypothetically? Hypothetically, just a, a guy and a girl living together. Mm -hmm. Platonic relationship. Okay, so rare, so <laughs> so with without any intentions of any relationship. Well, no, no, the in together, but not together. If you know what I'm saying. Friends with benefits. Is that what you're talking about? No. Okay. I mean, it's it's more than that, I think. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm just trying to give encouragement. So that's why I'm asking. All you can do with someone and you're not sure what the situation is, you just pray for them. You pray for the Spirit to draw them. Are they Christians? Maybe. Okay. And if you're not sure if they're Christians or not, it's, if, they're, if, they're sec if they're not Christians, then their standards are not biblical standards. Because non-Christians are not going to apply... I mean, they may have some, but I mean, the Bible is, I mean, if they're not, if they're not living for the Lord, the Bible just sounds good. It's got some good ideas and good things that pick and choose, but a Christian will choose all of the Bible. You can't, I mean, as a, a true Christian, you're not going to, I don't want to take this out because I don't like it, you know, or I'm going to ignore this scripture or this book of the Bible because it, it, I don't agree with it. You know, it does, you're not truly saved if that's what you're doing. Okay. 
Sorry. Oh no, don't apologize. Good questions. Good questions. Okay. Um, it is a delicate balance in a Christian marriage. Um, let's see. I've already run that, but First Peter. Okay. It's not only the marriage relationship that suffers when uh, uh, we uh, we abandon God's design. The husband's relationship with God suffers, and so does the wife's relationship. Um, and like I said, when I started uh, researching this and, and pulling this up, um, I, I found it very interesting that marriage was the first. Yeah, that is. If, if I was just cherry picking what what come to my mind and stuff, I, I would. I mean, but it makes sense. Why are you looking confused? I is, I'm sorry. Was marriage was, if yeah, why thinking. God's not hearing your prayers? Is marriage uh, relationship the, one of the first things that would have popped in your mind? No, mine either. Okay, back in the garden, we see this but, very. But, 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 but. Okay. But. There's a but. Yeah, <laughs> but it makes perfect sense. It does. Yeah, that's what I was that's saying. It makes sense. sense. If your marriage is not working, it's not. If it's not working properly, mm -hmm. there's sin there. Because Adam and Eve, think about it, the first. Who, who was the first people to sin? Adam and Eve. Adam, Adam and Eve. Eve. What happened? They let somebody else into the marriage. Mm -hmm. The devil. And then they started. Then they started hearing the temptation. And so, yeah, okay, it makes sense now. It didn't. It didn't thirty seconds ago. Now it does. Okay, glad it makes sense now. <laughs> Back in the garden, we see this very scenario played out when Satan spins his lies and tempts Eve to taste the forbidden fruit. Where is Adam? The Bible tells us he's right beside his wife. Genesis three six. Yeah. Adam knew God's command. And the consequences of their failure. To love his wife like Christ, Adam needed to confront the serpent and his lies and remind Eve of God's goodness. But Adam failed her. What was the result? They lost their close relationship with God that they had enjoyed in the garden. Satan is powerless if we keep our eyes on Jesus. But if we allow the enemy to gain a foothold, even a little foothold, in any part of our lives, including marriage, our relationship with God will suffer. Um... Husbands, you are loving. Um, are you loving your wives as Christ loved the church? Wives, are you submitting to your husbands um, as you do to the Lord? If your relationship is not being lived out according to God's design, ask for His forgiveness and take the necessary steps to bring your relationship into alignment with His will. Uh, yeah, with His will. As soon as repentance, confession, and restoration of that marriage formula takes place, joy is restored, and you can be confident that your relationship is not a hindrance, but a gateway to communion with your Heavenly Father. And so uh, when you pray, um, you know, about uh, your relationship your, um, for your spouse and all, um, ask God to show you ways in which uh, you need to nurture your marriage, to restore and maintain the beauty, delicate balance that God designed for us. Um, 1 Peter 2.21 um, is that the one that I spit out earlier? No. Yeah. So First Peter chapter 2, <coughs> verse 21. Well, I've got two scriptures, and they're both from First Peter. One's chapter 2, and the next one's chapter 3, so I'll jump over to the next chapter. Y'all be right there. All right, so First Peter 2, 21. Anybody got it? I got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. And then First Peter 3, 7. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, Showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, uh, since they oh, we're gonna go on that. <laughs> since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Yes. Do you have the Bible up there with you? I do not. Teresa, can you read verse six for me? Yes, sir. <clears throat> as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, <laughs> and you are her children. If you do good and do not fear anything, that is frightening. Thank you. I'm sorry. I couldn't. Okay. So. <laughs> call him Lord. Okay. Call him Lord. Okay. So. So we had we had a um, a couple and they were friends and 
the joke in their family was, you know, he was going through seminary school and all that was that Abra Sarah called Abraham Lord. So he requested for his wife to call him Lord. Mm -hmm. So Jason has like confiscated that little thing. And every once in a while he's like, you know, the Bible says you're supposed to call me Lord. I said, well, good luck with that. <laughs> anyway, I, but anyway, does anybody have any question on um, marriage and and um, your your prayer life? Summed it up when I asked that question. Okay, so we're gonna see how far of this I can get through. I got about five ten minutes. What's wrong? I know there was a question I had as far as uh, marriage and the prayer life. It's it's um, I mean, the way they coincide. Can I can I talk for a second? Yeah, I mean, because I can just do the next three next week. I mean, I, I, I'd so rather they talk. Coincide together is. is who is it you can, you're supposed to be the most honest with? In your your, your spouse. Your spouse. Mm -hmm. If you can't be honest with your spouse, it's hard. It's gonna be hard to be honest with God, right? I mean, I would think if you can't, then if you can't be honest with yourself, how can you be honest with God? I mean, that, that that's the one thing. Um, was Adam and Eve? They didn't know they were naked until they sinned, and then all of a sudden, it's like they're naked. And now shame came into the picture, you know, cause, and it's it's there was um, it, something got between them and their relationship with God, and then it caused a division between them because now they could no longer be open and, and unashamed around each other. Now they felt like they needed to cover themselves. I, it's it's, 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 it's it, the two correlate so good. This is good stuff. So you think about the the nakedness. You think about your. Uh, emotional nakedness, you know, I mean, like that, that's the physical nakedness in the garden that they were trying to hide. But we tried to hide our emotional nakedness a lot of times from our spouse and from God. Piggybacking on what you said. Um, I know it, is, it says here, um, I, I, this, I was, this probably uh, six years ago, maybe, and, and, and it's because of, um, somebody that was doing a program on the radio and stuff, but talking about calling the wife the weaker vessel. Well, you know, that's taboo in, in the secular world. You know, women don't want to be considered weaker. Um, and it's, it, it's a, I don't want to say a blessing and an honor, but for me it is because I don't mind being that I know my role, you know, and it's not that I can't do certain things uh, as far as, you know, I can cut the grass, whatever, you know, that is the manly thing to do. You know, I can do those things. Yeah, I can. But, I mean, like, in, in a relationship, if you don't realize what your role is, you cross over. And when you cross over, you know, uh, who can tell me in a, in a, a husband and wife relationship, uh, you know, deliverance speaking, what is the biggest and most aggravating demon that likes to torment couples? Finance. Finances? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'd rather you not answer just yet. <laughs> <laughs> so what what would be one of the biggest... Uh, or yard work, housework, comparison. About but we're talking about a specific spirit. Well, oh, Jezebel. Oh, okay. Jezebel. 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 Because, and then Jezebel, even though it's a female mm. spirit, spirits are, you know, not, you know, um, they're gender... non-binary. Non-binary, yes. <laughs> they can get that whole list of things. But, you know, so a Jezebel spirit can be on a man just as much as it can be on a woman. Um, and, okay, okay. I don't know why I've got where I say own, but, you know. Well, I think about their, anyway, it's in the person. So if I say own, I apologize. I mean in. But anyway, um, so the, the Jezebel can be in, a, in the man or in the woman. Um, so in a couple. So the church is is like a, a married couple because it talks about the bride and a, so you've got the 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 pastor, and then you've got you've got the um, the flock, you know the congregation, and um, you see a lot of times in, in churches that the the pastor the leadership will be very Jezebelish. Um, you can have husbands that are so Jezebelish. Um, and, and a lot of people think of Jezebel as like um, a womanizing, or I have, you know, the makeup, jewelry, and, and that kind of, and that can, seductive, thank you. Um, and that can, that, but there are multiple Jezebels. There is the man-hater Jezebel, 
and then there's the seductive Jezebel, and then there's some more in between, but that's, you know, two of the main ones. So, so when you, but as, as a wife, when, when you realize, okay, Jezebel wants to get on you, especially if you have a very passive spout in you, in you, okay. I don't know why I keep saying. <laughs> you've always, you've always said, well, that's all right. So, but, but she, she wants to attach and get in the wife so that, especially if the husband is passive, so that she can dominate and control. I mean, like, that's what Jezebel did with her, her husband. She, the vineyard, you know, the wine vineyard uh, that he wanted, and he was pouting, and instead of, you know, doing whatever a king could be doing, he, he kind of shriveled up and just kind of was pouting about it, and she took control, and, and so that's the whole Jezebel spirit that that's it um but it, it's important to know our, our roles and, and it's not i mean the bible says we're the weaker vessels the the wives um it it's not meant to be a slam you know we are the nurturers the husband can nurture the children but that's not how god naturally designed them they can make do and do it we are natural nurturers that, 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 you know, that's what the Bible says. Um, so anyway, when, when you don't know your role or you're not comfortable being in your role or you're not happy with the role that you have, ask God to change your heart. I mean, like, he set up things. Y'all, <clears throat> on a little side note, y'all know in the medical field, I'm a nurse, and um, in the medical field, you know, when they first started delivering babies at the hospital, they were not always delivered at the hospital. I mean, the death rate of the mothers was just astronomical. And what they uh, discovered was <clears throat> that if they washed their hands between each patient, the survival rate of the, the women went up. Um, and so they had a bowl of water and they'd wash their hands in that bowl and go check one woman and wash their hands, go check the next woman. Then they realized if they r washed their hands under running water, you know, if you, I think it's in Leviticus, there's scripture that prescribes for you to be washing your hands under running water. God's ways, I mean, like the ark, the way that the, the, the dimension, uh, the ratio for building the ark, they still build ships like that nowadays. Not because they're living by the Bible, but because it works more effectively than any other way. So God has... He has designed things, and we can try to do it. We can try to reinvent the wheel. But he's already, I mean, and it's perfect. And we have as a society, as, as nations, as, as different, you know, um, way back in history, people have tried to do things different ways and they end up going back to the way God says to do it. And, um, and it's the same way with, with husbands and wives. So anyway, since we were talking about that and Jason brought that up, yes. I got another thing about the marriage. Okay, say it. It's amazing because we think about sin. So, it's my job to desire you. It's your job to desire me. That's my husband, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by the way, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, but it's also my job to communicate that desire to you physically, emotionally, and spiritually. The same as Jesus desires us. He doesn't desire us sexually. That would be like baffling that what we've been talking about on Wednesdays. But it's it's the, this longing, this 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 pursuit, you know what I mean? And that that's so when we get out of that, you're letting in sin. Because you can get out of that with Jesus, you can get out of that with the spouse. That's amazing. I mean that's a phew. I will say about the, the, the well, I was going to say we've been, there's a couple that we've been uh, working with for marriage counseling and stuff and an awesome book there. I mean, it's <coughs> great book that we're uh, going through that highly encourage any couple. <sighs> marriage on the rock. By who? James, Jimmy, I don't know. Jimmy Evans. Jimmy <laughs> Evans. Yeah, I get a little bit of a star. But anyway, okay, so uh, we will continue talking about why our prayers do not Leave the ceiling, and why we don't our prayers don't get answered. Unanswered prayers, or unanswered prayer. Could have put an S on that. But anyway, um, does anybody have anything else? All righty. Okay. Well, after Teresa. Um, would you would you consider um, suggesting that book to someone that's not married? 
Absolutely. If you would want to be married one day, oh, yes. Uh, Jason, what do you think? Absolutely. It's a great book. <clears throat> it's, um, Jimmy Evans, Marriage on the Rock. It's a red book. I'm going to have to come up here. Because I'm going to get you close to some prayer. Darn. Nice pressure <laughs> on. That way I don't have to walk back there. Uh, but anyway, the, uh, the Elliott family, yes. our missionaries, they... Uh, we need to we need to reach back out to them and see what's going on if they got any new updates. But uh, I think as far as we know, they're still here. They ain't gone back to Nepal. I think that I think God has probably closed that door. And so I've been praying for is God's will for you know if it, if it's God's will. So it, it, Lord, if it be Thy will, um, to open doors somewhere else. I think because they you know it's it's obvious that they're they're open to. I mean they went all the way across the world to Nepal. And Nepal's not like a paradise, y'all. It's a third world just dump. Um, but, you know, it, those people need Jesus. And, you know, for them to take, what, they have four kids, right? Yes. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four kids and just up and leave. I mean, leave careers, leave homes, leave family, and just go to some place you don't know the language, you're scared of the food. I mean, who knows? And they go. So, I mean, I pray God opens the door for them because it's, they're ready to go. Don't even let them get settled, you know, send them somewhere else. That's my prayer. But anyway, y'all pray how you want to pray, however God leads you. All right, so Father, in the name of Jesus, God, thank you for today, Lord. Thank you for uh, getting us uh, everybody here safe. It was easy for me, God, but um, thanks for getting everybody else here safe, Lord. And God, we thank you for all you're going to do, Father. We just, uh, as we have a little bit of fellowship, God, we just pray that uh, we get our hearts ready, Father, for you to move, and uh, let's see what you do today, God. I can't wait to see the miracles that will take place and uh, healings that are going to happen, God. It's really exciting. And, uh, Father, help us have a, a attitude and a heart of expectation for you, God, and we just pray that we can stay out of the way. Less of us, more of Jesus, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. I got the shirt. Miracles. That's what I'm I like it. I, I like it. I like like Polaroids. Okay. So yeah, next week we will finish. Yep. I'm all ready. You can take uh, us off. Man. You can take us off. I Thank you. Should, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I figured out. So we are.